my husband, 25 male, and I, 25 female, have been married for the past two years. We have been together for almost five years since the first year of college when we first met. He and I knew almost instantly that we were going to be together forever because that's how strong our connection was, even on the first date. Our relationship has been pretty smooth. The only problem that we have ever had was with his parents. I'm going to be blunt and just say it. His parents are literally the worst. His parents are as toxic and horrible as it gets, and we have not been in touch with them for the past two years right after we got married because of an incident that happened around the time of the wedding. They are not the kind of people that anybody would want to be associated with, and I think pretty much everyone who knows them and is still in their life must be there for the money because they are filthy rich. My father-in-law is a surgeon and my mother-in-law is a dentist. Both of them are pretty well. Great at being parents? Not so much. I had known all along that my husband did not really have a good relationship with his parents because of the way that they had treated both their kids. Even before I had met them, my husband had warned me that they were extremely judgmental and didn't mince their words. They say exactly what they think, even if it might hurt the other person. They literally do not care about anybody's feelings and just say whatever they want to, regardless of whether it's politically correct to say or not. A couple of his girlfriends had to break up with him because they could not handle the way his parents would behave around them. They would make unnecessary remarks about their appearance, ask them what their parents did, and then make a mockery out of it. And I don't think any self-respecting individual would ever let somebody else's parents talk crap about their own parents and let them get away with it. So obviously, he had a lot of breaks before he finally got together with me. He had warned me about all of this. And I had made up my mind that no matter what, I was not going to let anything affect my relationship with him. I loved him and I was going to make this relationship work no matter what. So his parents had a lot of things to say about me, but I already knew what kind of people they were, so I did not let it get to me. Instead, I dealt with everything very graciously and just smiled through the entire ordeal. They picked on everything about me, right from the color of my hair to my parents' profession. My dad is a real estate agent, my mom is a stay-at-home mom, and I am an only child. So they had a lot of things to say about how they do not encourage stupid things like this is their family and they believe that as long as somebody can work, they should be working. They told me that unlike my mother, who they implied was pretty lazy for quitting her job and staying at home just to take care of one child, it would have still made sense if at least I had a sibling. Anyway, they told me that I should not have any idea about quitting my job and staying at home, depending on their son for everything, because they were not going to allow it and they would make sure that they got us divorced if I ever got any ideas like that. Mind you, this was our first meeting and they were not even pretending to joke about it. They said all of this to me with a straight face and I felt weird about it. But I already knew that this was how they were. I did not engage and I just said that I would keep that in mind and smiled. I'm sure a lot of you might be wondering why I even had to put up with any of this and why my husband couldn't just stand up to his parents. To be honest, we also think we should have just cut ties with them at that very moment but unfortunately we were in college at the time and my husband did not have any other way to pay for his tuition from his parents so as long as he was dependent on them for money he had to put up with them and I did not want him to get in trouble so I did it for him honestly I don't have any regrets about it because I know that I did it for my husband and had it not been for him I probably would have just torn into them and let them have it. And I did that anyway a couple of years later, but I let them know exactly what I thought of them. So no, I don't regret not standing up to them earlier since I was doing it for my husband and it was important for us. That being said, 
Throughout our years of college, I only met them a couple of times. Thankfully, I would spend the holidays with my family and we would only have to meet his family on his birthdays. And maybe I would visit them once at some other time with my husband, so it would just be once or twice a year. None of these meetings were particularly memorable or even good, so I tried my best to forget about them because they were just really rude to me every time. I don't remember the things that they said, but I just remember them picking on me a lot and trying to make me feel bad about myself. I don't know what it was, maybe it was their idea of testing me or something equally screwed up, but I just remember feeling very annoyed whenever I was around them. Every time we would get back from visiting his parents, him and I would discuss how frustrating it was and he would console me, telling me that he would make sure that he talked to his parents about their behavior after he had graduated so they did not cut off his funds in the middle of the process. We could not risk it, so we just decided to keep our mouths shut until we had graduated, and then after that, we would deal with his parents. But until then, we had to accept that this is how they were because he was dependent on them financially, and it would be too much hassle to apply for a student loan or try to work through college. We are ready to admit it. We decided to take the easy way out at the time and people might not like it, but it was the most practical way to deal with it. Anyway, we continue to be together and things are going pretty well for us since we did not have to meet with his parents often. Shortly after we graduated, he decided to propose to me and I accepted because we had already been together for a really long time. And it was just the perfect opportunity for us to get married and spend the rest of our lives together. I was sure of him and he was sure of me. We didn't exactly need our parents' approval because anyway, I knew that my parents loved him and he had a great relationship with my parents. He did not bother to ask his parents if they were okay with him getting married so young because he knew that they would not approve of it and try to talk about it, and he did not need that. I guess you could say that they were the opposite of conservative, they were literally aggressively liberal, and they did not think that people should get married young or have kids young because of their personal beliefs. But my husband and I have known each other for a really long time, and I don't think I would ever want to be with anybody else. I can't even imagine myself with anybody else. I am certain that it's the same way for him, so we were sure about each other. But he knew that if he tried to tell his parents that he was getting married before he had even turned 25, they would lose their heads over it and it would be a mess. So he didn't tell them about the engagement and inform them only after three months had already passed and they couldn't exactly change his mind after that. When we told them that we were engaged, they did not seem happy about it. But there was nothing that they could do, so they had to just accept it. For the next couple of months while we were preparing and gearing up for the wedding, they did not try to talk to us or engage with us in any way. Had they been better to my husband, he might have been upset about it, but he did not seem to care about it one bit. And we were actually glad that they were staying out of the way because he did not want them interrupting our happiness. His sister was the only person from his family who seemed to actually be bothered with the wedding and was very helpful throughout the process, even before when I had met her a couple of times while I was visiting my husband's family. She had always been nice to me, and I think she was the only person from his family that I actually got along with. I don't know how such awful parents were able to raise such nice kids, but I guess that two of them just saw their parents and they decided that they were never going to turn out like them. Even though they had never bothered to properly congratulate us or even attend our engagement party, we had thrown it only after we had told them about our engagement, out of respect for them, and we still invited them to the wedding as a formality. Whether they wanted to attend or not, that was completely up to them. We did not expect them to RSVP to it, but surprisingly they accepted the invitation. 
It was kind of weird because they had not spoken to us after we had announced our engagement and told them about it, and they had very clearly been unhappy about it, but hadn't said anything. After that, they did not exactly bother to keep in touch, and we did not think that they would attend the wedding ever since they had made it so obvious that they were not happy with our decision. I guess we should have realized that there was something fishy about their decision to attend the wedding, but we got too busy with everything else to even care about that. Anyway, on the day of the ceremony, we got married and everything went smoothly, but his parents did not show up until after everything was over. We did find it a little strange since he had agreed to attend the wedding, but then they did not show up. They showed up much later after almost everybody had left and it was just us and a couple of our close family members. Basically, just my parents and some people from my family since his relatives had left for the most part. We were having a fun time and just chatting while sitting around, which is when his parents showed up. They had not even bothered to dress up and turned up in their casual clothes, so we were pretty surprised when we saw that. Then they had the audacity to walk up to us and ask us if everything was over already, as if it was completely normal for them to arrive hours later than the time that we had mentioned and expect everything to be put on hold for them. My husband got really annoyed because this was supposed to be a happy day for us and he did not want them ruining it for him. So I decided to deal with it and I was someone who told them that they were a little too late and everything was already done. So now they could either have dinner and leave or they could leave without it as well. We were okay with both the options. And that got them really riled up, just as I had expected. And they started hurling accusations at me. They accused me of being a gold digger, just like my mother, and said that my plan was to create a rift between my husband and them so they would not have any access to him anymore and I would poison him against them so I could have them all to myself and then I would live the rest of my life off of his money. It was so far-fetched and stupid I couldn't even take them seriously. I literally started laughing in their faces and told my husband that he had to file for divorce immediately or they would cut him off. But my husband had graduated. He was no longer dependent on them for money and we had our own jobs. So he stood his ground and he told them that he did not need them anymore and they had always been extremely toxic so they could just leave and it would not affect us in any way whatsoever. So they left and we did not speak to them after that for almost two years. Up until a week ago, we had no contact with them and unfortunately, we had to cut ties with his sister as well. Or to put it more accurately, she had to cut ties with us because she was still depending on them. And even though my husband made a decent amount of money, it was too early to be able to support her at the time and she needed her parents, no matter how terrible they were. So she chose them over us and honestly, we understand why she did that. Her hands were tied and I knew that if she had an option, she would have picked us in a heartbeat. And she did, a couple of weeks ago. She showed up at our house and said that she needed a place to stay because she had been kicked out. She was in tears and the second that I saw her at the outdoor stuff, I took her in because there was no way I was turning her away, no matter what had happened between us and her parents. Once she was inside the house, she told us that the reason she had been kicked out was because she had not been accepted into the college of her parents' choice and they were very upset about it. So they kicked her out to teach her a lesson. The rejection had come a couple of days before she got kicked out and they felt like she was not sad enough about it. They got into a big fight because of that, which was just so ridiculous. And they ended up telling her that she was not welcome to stay in their house anymore. Not until she started acting like she actually regretted not studying hard enough, even though she was one of the best students in her school and it was just bad luck. We decided to take her in, no questions asked, and to help her deal with her emotions. We had not saved up enough money to be able to pay for her tuition, but we told her that we would support her in whatever decision she made. 
Even if she wanted to take a gap year and find herself, we would be okay with it and we would want to support her. Or if she actually wanted to go to college, we would help her take out a student loan and then she could do whatever she wanted to without having her parents interfere. So she has been living with us for the past few weeks ever since her parents kicked her out and even though we are trying our best to be there for her, we have to go to work every day and we can only spend the evenings at home. The evenings and the weekends are the only time we get with her and even then she seems really morose and sad. She refuses to speak to anybody and stays in her room the entire day. I think she's depressed, but she keeps telling us that she'll be fine in a few days and she just needs some time to get over this. We have even offered to take her to therapy, but she insists that she's fine and does not need anybody's help right now. She just wants to figure out what to do with her life because she had assumed that her parents would help her out no matter what, just like my husband. But unfortunately for her, she did not get into the college that they wanted her to attend, unlike my husband, and now she had no idea what to do with her life. She hasn't even accepted any of the other spots that have been offered to her in other colleges. So we are also getting a little bit worried because if she doesn't respond soon enough, she might not be able to go to college this year. It's just a huge mess right now and we don't know what to do about it because at the end of the day, we are not her parents. We are not even old enough to be her parents. The age gap between the two of us is really not that huge, so we can be there for her as friends, but the guidance and mentorship that she needs right now, we can't offer her that. And she doesn't want to take it from anybody else right now. Anyway, a couple of days ago, I was going through the kitchen cabinets looking for something, but I found a bottle of pills in the cabinet. I was taking a bag because it's not like my husband and I required any sort of serious medication right now. We don't really need it, and the ones we do, we keep them in the medicine cabinet under the sink. So I took those out and realized that these were antidepressants, which was sort of an alarm in my head because she was refusing to get professional help yet she had a bottle of antidepressants lying around in the house. That did not seem right. She was not at home at the time. She was out to buy herself some snacks and I had a day off from work, which is why I was at home. I called my husband up immediately and told him about what I had found and he told me to wait at home and he was coming back to deal with this. Both of us were pretty surprised because there was no way she could get her hands on those pills without a prescription and if she was doing something illegal, we wanted to know just so we could keep her safe. Both of them came back home around the same time and we confronted her about what we had found and she broke down instantly. She told me that she had kept it there on purpose because she actually wanted to find it and questioned her about it. She told me that she was in touch with one of my father-in-law's business associates and he was the one hooking her up with those pills. This business associate was in his late 20s and they had started a relationship at the beginning of this year, just as soon as she had turned 18. He was almost 29 and she was 18. You can tell that it's pretty strange. It's legal, but that does not make it any less weird on a social level. And the fact that he was a business associate of her father made it all the more. They had met at a work party and he had started hitting on her almost immediately. And she, being young and vulnerable, actually started feeling for him. For three months into their secret relationship, she found out that he had been cheating on her and he begged her for forgiveness and she decided to forgive him. But it kept happening again and again. At some point a couple of weeks ago, her parents found out about it accidentally while going through her laptop because they had noticed the way she was behaving. And that was actually another reason why they had kicked her out. The fact that she had been hooking up with this guy combined with the fact that she did not get accepted into the college that they wanted her to go to was what led them to take such a harsh step against her and she was really depressed about it. She confessed that she had been feeling this way for a couple of months now 
and her boyfriend had been hooking her up with those pills. She said that she had a problem and that she wanted us to help her because she was ashamed of admitting to all of this and she felt like a total idiot. I felt bad for her, obviously, but more than anything else, my husband and I were furious that his parents had treated her this way. She was obviously in trouble and he needed to protect her if something bad happened to her. The almost 30-year-old business associates should have known better than he did and they should have been there for her, trying to hush it all up and protect their own reputation. The three of us talked about it and we decided that the best thing to do right now would be to expose everything that they were up to. Because my sister-in-law might have been an addict, but the business associate who was hooking her up with those pills was equally at fault, if not more. As a matter of fact, in my opinion, he was the only person at fault. Her parents had known about this, yet they did not do anything about it. Because then they would have to talk about how they had found out and they did not want to do that because they wanted to protect their own reputation. So we put the story out on social media and then crap hit the fan. As soon as that story got out, everybody was suspended. My in-laws and the guy who had been handing those pills to my sister-in-law and then the hospital authorities where they worked started the investigation against everybody who was involved, which is still ongoing. And everybody from my husband's family contacted us to tell us that what we did was out of line. They believed that we could have resolved it by talking to them. But instead of doing that, we decided to jump to an extreme level and get them into the kind of trouble that they would never be able to bounce back from. They think we were quite unfair. Honestly, it has us second guessing our decision because the kind of flack that we were receiving for this is unprecedented. So I really need to know. AITA for putting out the story of why my in-laws had kicked my sister-in-law out of their house. So I'm really sorry, but I was not able to post any updates about this for the past month because everything was so stressful. My sister-in-law decided that she was not going to join college this year. She was going to rehab instead and trying to get herself sorted out because she really had an addiction and we hadn't even noticed it. She was so good at hiding it. She was a high functioning addict and it was so dangerous. I am really happy that she put that bottle there that day and we found out because otherwise God only knows what might have happened. The matter is still under investigation and it has gone to court now. There is a very real chance that all of them might lose their license and I really think that they deserve it. My in-laws might lose it for a short time, but even then, I think it's necessary. My husband's family has cut all ties with us, and honestly, we don't feel too bad about it. Because even after hearing about how my in-laws have been treating him and his sister, they don't seem to care about that. All they care about is that we were too hard on them. They don't even give a crap about how they have also always been too hard on their own kids. They were the worst of the worst, and like I had said in my original post, they were the most toxic people I have ever come across in my entire life. My parents have been very helpful, and I'm really glad about it because I don't think we have been able to deal with this as successfully as we have without their help. We don't speak to anybody from his family, so we don't really have a lot of updates on what is going on with the court case. We only get bits and pieces of information from their neighbors or other people who know them, family, friends, acquaintances. But obviously they will not know everything like his relatives would. However, since they are not speaking to us, we have to make do with this. We have not visited them or spoken to his parents ever since we posted online and I think it's better for us to keep it like that. Update two, it has happened that all three of them lost their license according to the court. My in-laws are not going to be able to practice for the next three years and the guy who had been supplying my sister-in-law with those pills is going to prison for a while. 
I don't know the exact details, maybe that will come out later, but at least I know that justice has been served. My sister-in-law is in rehab right now. I'll be able to pay her a visit to tell her about this in a couple of days. We have been in touch with her and she's doing well. We have heard that she's making progress and we could not be happier about it. I think I'm going to try and get her a job in my company since I'm planning to quit my current job and start something of my own. I bet his parents would be very happy to know that I am actually starting my own business because they had just assumed that I would want to be a stay-at-home wife just because my mother had chosen that route for herself. I wish I could just contact them and let them know how great life has been without them and how they are only reaping the fruits of the seeds that they had sown. I want to tell them that they deserve this because ultimately pride comes before the fall and their downfall has been spectacular. I would really want to meet them now since they have nothing to be so arrogant and cocky about anymore. My husband doesn't seem to care but I still remember all the ways that he had insulted me and my parents back when I was still dating my husband. Well, how the mighty have fallen. Hey guys, so it has been six months since my last update. I have already started my new business and guess what? The vultures have started circling us already. Things are going pretty well for me career-wise and, and everyone wants a piece of this now. So his parents actually reached out to him and asked him, if we would be open to the idea of letting them come on board as investors in my business. Since now they don't have any source of income of their own, they have to rely on their savings. And if they don't blow through all of it in the next five years, so they can either live frugally or find an alternative. The audacity to even think that I would have any sort of business dealings with everything that they have put my family through, that's just insane. We blocked the numbers that they had contacted us from and told them never to contact us again or we would get a restraining order against him because we wanted nothing to do with them. Anyway, after that, they had the good sense not to bother us again and we are really happy about it. My sister-in-law is doing much better now and she is living with us so we can take care of her and keep an eye on her. She's working in my company and she's really good at her job so we might turn it into a permanent position if she decides not to go back to college. But I would still suggest that she go even though she's not interested anymore. Anyway, things are falling into place and we are happy. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.